Good morning. We're going to start with a video. Happy World Information Architecture Day 2015. The Information Architecture Institute is a volunteer organization focused on empowering local communities to shape the global practice of information architecture. Every February, we host World IA Day, a free event that takes place simultaneously in dozens of cities across the globe. World IA Day is about bringing people from different communities together around a common theme to further the global conversation about how we practice and teach information architecture. This year, our theme is Architecting Happiness. We chose this as a theme in 2015 because of the rising amount of information that everybody has to deal with. But no matter how big the wave of information coming at us all, we're all in this tiny boat together. When information is clear, we feel loved, we feel cared for, we feel more confident, we feel happy. So today, we invite you to add to our global conversation. How does information architecture impact our happiness? If you find World IA Day content to be worth your time, please consider making a small donation at worldiaday.org. Happy World Information Architecture Day! And welcome to the first ever World IA Day Seattle plus Info Camp. Thank you guys for being here. This is incredibly exciting. My name is Stuart Maxwell. I'm an experienced architect at REI, and I am the local producer of World IA Day Seattle. Uh, what is World IA Day, you may ask? Thank you. Thank you for asking. Uh, World IA Day is a free one-day conference hosted by the Information Architecture Institute uh, and held simultaneously in dozens of cities around the world. Uh, every year, the global World IA Day team picks a theme and uh, opens a call for cities, and anyone can submit to bring this event to their hometown. Uh, now for a really hard question. What is IA? Uh, this question is unavoidable, it, even in a room full of information architects, especially in a room full of information architects. There, and there are about as many definitions of IA as there are information architects. Um, in fact, uh, this fellow said, nobody knows what information architecture is. Peter Morville said this at last year's IA Summit. And uh, let me remind you that this is the man that co-authored the Polar Bear book, which is the seminal book on uh, in information architecture. But I take his point. In information architecture is hard to pin down. It encompasses a lot of things. But I think we can find an answer that we can use for today. So I like what, uh, I like what Michael Cummings says. He says that uh, information architecture is a practice that aims to identify and organize information in a purposeful and service-oriented way. It's not bad. Uh, Andreas Rasmini says that IA is about more than just structure and organization. It's bigger than just websites. Uh, information architecture derives relevance from making sense of abstract, complex problems. Also pretty good, but I actually like how Abby Covert and Dan Klein boiled it down. They, they say simply, IA is the process of making the unclear clear. And I think that no matter what your title or role or experience, this is what it means to be an IA. It means having a passion for making information findable, useful, and usable. So World IA Day is uh, presented by the Information Architecture Institute. Uh, how many uh, IAI members do we have in the house? Raise your hands. A few. If you're not a member, I highly encourage you. They have a very reasonable due structure. If you're a student, it's very inexpensive, uh, and uh, you get a lot of benefits uh, from the IAI, including uh, contributing towards events like these. The IAI bo Board of Directors uh, are these folks, Abby Covert and Aaron Stratos, in particular, deserve a big thanks for, um, for their contributions to today's uh, events, as do the Global World IAD Leadership Team. These guys have been amazing. Um, I love doing events with, um, doing anything with information architects because everything is so organized. <laughs> and the resources they provided were so incredibly thorough that uh, it just made our jobs easy. So, so big thanks to these guys. So this is the, uh, the fourth ever World IA Day and it's the, uh, the first ever here in um, Washington State. Uh, right now, uh, we are one of 38 cities in 24 countries aclo across the globe 
that set aside a day to talk about information architecture. So this very day, this in this 24-hour per period, our colleagues across the US and Canada, as well as Australia, Chile, Brazil, South Africa, Japan, India, Iran, the United Arab Emirates, and all over Europe are also uh, gathering to talk about information architecture. And we are really pleased this year to be joining with InfoCamp um, to bring you a mini unconference to go along with our, our day-long information architecture conference. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about how this is going to work later on. But now I want to recognize uh, Sarah McCall and Andrew Morton, who've been working really hard. Where are you guys? I see Sarah in the back and Andrew over there. Hey, give those guys a round of applause. They've been working hard to prepare the, the, the InfoCamp portion of the day, and we'll, we'll get to that later in the morning. Um, but there was a lot of love that was required to get here, and in fact, I, I'd like to recognize our entire uh, uh, local volunteer team. If you guys would all stand up, uh, please join me in thanking the organizers for today's event. Uh, we have Isaac, Dina, Carolyn, Andy, uh, Sarah and Andrew, and Misty. Did I miss anybody who's in the room? Not everybody who was an organizer could be here today, but nevertheless, they've been working hard behind the scenes. We've also got these, these badges on. So if you have any questions during the day, make sure to find uh, one of us with the, with the uh, World IA Day badges, and we can answer whatever questions you guys have. Uh, and now I'd like to bring up Isaac Pattis, who is our sponsor coordinator, and he's going to say a special thank you to our sponsors. Hi, guys. I'll keep it quick. Uh, we have quite a few global sponsors that have helped put the uh, entire event on around the world. They've pitched in a lot more for uh, communities that need a little more help. We have had local sponsors here that have helped feed you guys today and pay for this space. So I'll ask you to thank them profusely in person. Moz is our headline sponsor today. They are over here and would love to talk to you about the uh, IA initiatives that they are starting to undergo. And we have a series of other local sponsors as well. General Assembly will host a happy hour for us from 4.30 to 6. Then we have HCDE in the house. Liz Sanaki and the purple shirt here can talk to you about that. And Doel Eugenio with the hat on and his hand up there can talk to you about the iSchool and their programs. REI is here, and there are quite a few of us here. Stuart, myself, Dina, we can all talk with you. And then ACES Pacific Northwest also threw in some money. Justin, why don't you put your hand up for that one? <laughs> Thank you guys very much. Please feel free to interact with all of our local sponsors throughout the day, around lunch, and over happy hour. And uh, give our sponsors a round of applause. Thank you. They're the reason we can have coffee and donuts and have a roof over our head today. So thank you guys very much. But most of all, thank you guys. Thank you for being here. Thank you for showing your, your passion and your support. Uh, I had the honor of pitching Seattle as a host city for this year's World IA Day. And uh, I made the point that Seattle was home to a passionate, devoted, and uh, if I do say so, damned good looking community of IA and UX professionals uh, who really deserve to join the global community in celebrating information architecture. And you guys proved us right. We sold out our, our available tickets two and a half weeks before the event. So it really shows how enthusiastic uh, you guys are about the uh, about uh, information architecture, so thank you for being here. Um, if you guys tweet, you can help us share the love by uh, using the hashtags WIAD or WIADSEA15. Um, house rules, uh, did everybody get the Wi-Fi password? If you didn't, they're posted on the, the posts here. Um, just wanna remind you that Impact Hub is a working space. Um, if you weren't aware that like above uh, this space, and I think going up for uh, three or four floors, are offices and co-working spaces. Um, people paid to, to be here uh, uh, throughout the week to use this as their office, so um, just be aware of that, that we have certain spaces designated for this conference, and if you wander too far from them, you might, might be wandering into somebody's workspace, so just be aware of that. Uh, restrooms uh, are in the back. Um, it's a little bit of an adventure. I thought my, I might be like walking into a, a horror film when I was going down the stairs, but nevertheless, I got back safely. <laughs> uh, and uh, I think that's it. Are there any questions about logistics of the day before we get started? No? Okay. Uh, let's do this thing. So, architecting happiness. Well, uh, I have to admit, when I first, sorry. First problem to work on. All right. 
So when I, when I first heard the, um, the theme for this year's World IA Day, I, I uh, rolled my eyes just a little bit. Uh, architecting happiness, I mean, happiness is kind of squishy, isn't it? I mean, we information architects are involved in serious business, right? But um, I, I took a couple of deep breaths and I let the, con uh, the concept sink in a bit and I realized, you know, I do practice user-centered design and the goal of that is happiness, isn't it? I mean, we rarely put it in those terms. Uh, I've never seen that written in an academic paper. I've never seen uh, a requirement or acceptance criteria that said that the goal was user happiness. But I think it's our big unspoken assumption. Uh, I think it's the thing that we secretly hope for, that that our users will be delighted by the uh, systems that we build, that their lives will be made a little bit easier because, uh, because we made information easier to find. And I think that what drives us as information architects is this innate understanding that making the unclear clear is such a powerful ability because it leads to the relief of a small burden for our users. If ambiguity is a state of tension, then clarity is the state when the tension lifts. And you never see pictures of people frowning when they've achieved clarity. They're always smiling. I do love those moments in user testing when, uh, when a test subject's eyes light up or their light bulb goes off or they, they enthuse about the thing that I helped to build. And it's those moments of joy that really keep me motivated to go back to the whiteboard and try to make the next experience that much better. So I think that happiness really is the outcome of information architecture. Now, it also occurred to me that I had very little concept of what happiness was. I mean, really, I mean, we all know what happiness is on a gut level, but did I know it well enough that I could describe it to an alien or to a computer program? What, what are the attributes of happiness? Uh, if I wanted to architect for it, how would I know when I was uh, successful? And I thought I might not be the only one who had those questions. So what we've tried to do today is put together a roster of speakers that can address both the deep technical aspects of information and the harder to define outcomes of good information design. So in a few minutes, we'll hear from Laura Musikansky, who's the executive director of the Happiness Alliance. And then uh, Wendy Pose will take us deep into the woods of big data. Um, <coughs> Andy Fitzgerald, bless you, sir. Andy Fitzgerald will talk about, the, uh, about IA's role in creating systems that demand communication and clarity. And then at 11.45, we will hear pitches for info camp sessions, have a little bit of lunch, and then go into the unconference portion of the day. And finally, we will get back together so that Samir Halai can tell us about the role that IA and taxonomy plays in getting solar energy into the hands of people who really need it. And then, of course, there's a happy hour, which is actually two hours, so bonus happy.